Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at the Harbor Freight Earthquake XT 12 volt lithium ion 3 8 cordless ratchet. This is a viewer requested review. A few weeks back I did a poll on my community section giving you my viewers a choice of several different cordless ratchets to choose from for my next tool review. And the winner was the Harbor Freight Earthquake XT 12 volt lithium ion cordless 3 8 ratchet. So I went out and I bought this guy to give you guys the review that you asked for. So let's open this puppy up and see what we get. But before we do that, if you enjoy watching honest tool and product reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you get notified every time I produce a new product or tool video review. So let's see what we have here. It comes in a nice little box. This is for obviously store presentation. And when you go to the store, you have to ask them to pull this out from the back because they keep it in the back. They don't have it in the front. They don't want people stealing this off the shelf. So let's open it up and see what we get. Oh man, that is hard to get out of there. And there you have it. Right there, a nice hard case that it comes in for easy storage. What do you get in this case? Just take it out of here. So what do you get in the case? You get the ratchet, you get the battery, you get the charger, and obviously the case. Now this retails normally for $129, but you can get it on coupon quite often for $99.99. So I suggest you wait for that $99 coupon. And if you watch any of my Harbor Freight coupon videos, you know that I put that out there for you all of the time. Every time it shows up on sale, watch my coupon videos from Harbor Freight and you'll get that coupon and save yourself 30 bucks every time. Now this comes with a 90 day warranty. It has 60 foot pounds of torque. It has a metal body. This part right here and this part right here is all metal. This part is uh, plastic and you can see it's you know it goes inside there for the battery so all this part down here is plastic with a rubberized over mold for easier grip and let's see it has a no load the rpm speed of up to 170 rpms it has a 2 amp hour 12 volt lithium ion battery and there you can see the specs of the battery of what it has stamped on it and let's see, it has a variable speed paddle, so you can select the different speeds to it. Has a slim body compared to some of the other manufacturers out there, which are really big and bulky at the bottom. And then the head is always going to be the same design. It has a forward and reverse switch on the back here, which you can just slip, you know, forward and reverse. And the length on this unit is 12.6 inches by 1.8 inches down here at the biggest part on the bottom consider comparing you know taking into consideration the paddle and all that kind of stuff and the weight is about three pounds at least that's what it says on their website i feel to me it feels a little bit heavier than that because it is a lot of uh, metal on here it's supposed to be an aluminum body but this part right here i may believe well wait a minute hold on let's get a magnet and see if it is aluminum or not let's find out for sure and no i don't think that's aluminum because aluminum is not magnetic and it is magnetic as you can see and this part is obviously steel, so I don't know what part of the body is aluminum right now. It doesn't seem to be, so there you go. Anyway, the paddle, the paddle, nope, that's metal, that's steel too. That's magnetic. So maybe the internals are aluminum. I don't know what they're referring to. That's what it says on their website. And if you want to buy this item, if you want the item numbers, just to make it easy for you, what you're going to do is go to Harbor Freight and look up item number 64196 or 63538 or 56660. Those are the three options you have available for this. And this is a new or different version, let's say, because before the body used to be gray and then the head was black and the rubber overmold was also black. But now they made this black here instead of the gray. Maybe they thought it looked sleeker, more modern. I don't know why, but they made it this color right here, all black all the way around. Which, I mean, it is kind of good because it will get filthy dirty when you're working on, uh, you know, automotive stuff, mechanical stuff. It will get dirty. So black is probably better than gray. So let's see. The charge time is unknown also because they don't tell you on the website how long it takes to charge. So I'm going to have to test this out. I'm going to have to drain it and see how long it takes to charge. The runtime, unknown, they don't specify that either, so I'm going to have to do my own testing to figure out how long is the runtime. So how long it'll take it to charge, 
unknown doesn't say I'm gonna have to figure out how long it takes for all this stuff so I'm gonna be doing a bunch of battery tests off camera and then I will let you know how it turns out when I come back with that so let's put these aside for now now if you want to compare this to a regular air ratchet here you have the Harbor Freight unit right here, battery operated, cordless, and then you have a regular ratchet right here. And if you put them together, head to head, both right there, nice and even, there you can see the dimension of how they compare. As far as thickness, they're fairly, this is a tiny bit thicker than this one, this way. And uh, as far as length goes, a tiny bit longer, not a lot. There are some other models out there, if you don't like this, uh, the length has its pros and cons. In some cases, the length may be good because you can reach some tight areas, get the head into areas where the shorter, stubbier ones may not reach. Also, you can use it two-handed. You can grab it this way and use it two-handed for twisting and turning. For some of you, maybe you may not like that. You may like a shorter design. There are other manufacturers which are shorter. So obviously, that's a decision you need to make when you're choosing which cordless ratchet to get. As far as the side profile goes, there you go. That's how it looks. This one wants to tilt a little bit. Let me hold that up for you. There you can see the side profile of how they look. The head is going to be about the same. The body is the only part that differs a tiny bit. So there you go. Keep that from tilting over on you. So anyway, let's move along. Now, a couple of things to look at as far as this unit goes, if you're considering this, comparing it to other units out there. If you're considering it, comparing it to other manufacturers out there, a couple of things to keep in mind. First of all, there is no paddle lock. You, whenever you hit it, it goes. So there's no paddle lock whatsoever. Some other manufacturers will put a lock down here on the paddle so when it is not in use, you can lock it and prevent it from just ratcheting away like crazy in your toolbox and draining your battery. Battery level indicator, again, does not have one. There is no indicator anywhere on the battery as to how charged it is. Right now, I have no idea how much power is in this battery. On the unit itself, there is no LED indicator anywhere, anywhere, anywhere on the body indicating how much battery this has. So even if you pop the battery in, let's pop this guy in here, right there. There is no battery indicator anywhere telling you how charged up this is. So that is a bit of a problem where it's a mystery. The whole time, you don't know how much battery you have. Only the battery charger will tell you when it's full, and then it'll stop when it's drained. Everything in between is a total mystery. So that's something to keep into consideration when you're shopping around. Another thing is an LED light to light up your work area. Some units out there will have an LED light somewhere around the top here so it can light up the area that you're working on. This one does not have an LED light. So if you want one to light up your area, that's something you may want to consider right there. As far as the variable speed trigger, let me show you how that works. Now, one thing I do notice right off the bat is that it does seem to have a little bit of a dead spot on the variable speed trigger. To some people, that may not matter. I mean, some people just mash it down every time, just mash it, and they don't care. If you want to be able to feather your trigger, one pet peeve of mine is any tool that has a little dead spot when you're trying to adjust it very gently and you have to go through that dead spot before it starts moving. I find that rather annoying. If it bothers you also, that's something to keep in mind. I don't know how the other manufacturers will respond, if they're more responsive or not. I'm just telling you about this tool right now. But watch when I push it in, it has maybe like a sixteenth of an inch of play. See right there? Nothing. Nothing. So if that's a pet peeve of yours, something to keep in mind. Like I said, others may be just as bad. I have no clue. Later on down the road, when I review more of these tools, then we'll know if it's an issue with this one or others have the same problem. And like I said, on the battery itself, you can see no indicator anywhere. We have no clue how much power is in here. But as far as the unit goes, 
There you can see how it moves. Let's the other way. And it basically works just like an air ratchet. If I was to hook this up to the hose, the functioning of the head would be exactly the same as this. I am pretty sure it's the same type of dimension. And like I said, as far as uh, the size goes and the trigger area, you can see that pretty much it's about in the same area. The trigger, except the head on this one, sticks out a little further, but the trigger area is about there and the weight is almost the same. This does feel a little heavy towards the head. Even with the battery inserted, when you hold it, it does want to tip this way. It does feel a little top heavy. So just letting you know, it is not a 50-50 balance. It is not perfectly balanced. You put it, you see, if I were to put it on my hand right there, I'm balancing it out there, but it wants to tip towards the head. So it is a little top heavy. Just be aware of that. So anyway, I'm gonna, that's just basically an intro as to the unit, its pros and cons, what it does, what it doesn't do, as far as what the website says. I'm going to be doing quite a few different types of tests. I'm going to show you some testing as far as uh, the torque specs. I'm going to do a couple of things with it. I'm going to use it in actual automotive work and show you how it performs. So let's get on with that. Okay, guys, so we're back. So one of the first few tests I decided to do was the battery and the charger and test those out and see exactly what kind of results we got. Because as far as information on these two on the Harbor Freight website is non-existent. There is no information there as to charge time, run time, any of that stuff, non-existent. They give us no information at all. So part of my testing is to give you as much information as I can get from my results in the real world. So anyway... Let me tell you how the charger works, first of all, so you understand how that works. Very simple charger. When you plug it in, lights up green, indicating that it has power. When you take the battery, pop it in the charger, it'll light up red, indicating that it is charging. When it goes back to green, means that it's fully charged, you're done. Take it out, start using it. Now, if you take the battery and pop it in, and the red light starts blinking, that means defective battery, not going to charge it. So that way, you know what the battery charger is trying to tell you. Anyway, so this little three cell battery, 12 volt lithium ion battery, how long does it take to charge from zero to fully charged? Well, that's an interesting question. I ran the test a couple times and what I came up with was a whopping one hour and 45 minutes. This is definitely not a rapid charger. It took its own sweet time. One hour and 45 minutes is a really long time as far as I'm concerned. I don't know how other chargers do it with for these kind of tools, I mean. I don't know, some other manufacturers may have faster chargers, but this one is definitely not a fast charger. And I know you're going to say, well, was it really drained down? Did it have any residual charge, etc., etc.? Well, the only way that I know how far down it was, was I took the battery, I popped it into the tool, and I ran it until it stopped running. And then I popped it in there. So I ran it until it stopped. I waited a few seconds, clicked it again, waited a little while, clicked it again until no matter how, how much I waited, it would not start running at all. So when it was totally drained, when it wouldn't run the tool at all, that's when I popped it in the charger. And from then to fully charged, it took an hour and 45 minutes. Now, as far as runtime goes, I put the battery fully charged into the ratchet and I just held the, uh, the paddle down and put a timer and just waited to see how long it would run. So just like that, I just tied it down and let it go with a timer to see exactly how long it would run. And remember, I am saying continuous running. I'm not talking about how long it will last you in the real world. I'm talking about testing continuous running. And it did not last very long. It only lasted 30 minutes. And the body did get hot and the, and the head did get hot, but I waited, I turned off the timer and I waited, allowed it to cool down, tried it again and it was totally dead. The battery was totally drained. I did that a couple times just to make sure the test went consistent and from fully charged, if you hold the paddle down and run it consistently, you're looking at 30 minutes of continuous runtime. Now in the real world, I know somebody's gonna comment, well, I got a whole lot more time than that. Well, yes, of course you will. Because in the real world, all you do is spin off a nut or a bolt or something, put it down, keep on working, and then pick it up again and use it again. You're using it on and off, on and off, on and off. You're not using continuously, consistently like I did. That is the point of the test. How much runtime can you get out of it 
just continuous from start to finish. 30 minutes, that's what you get. All right, so let's go do some other testing. Okay guys, let's move on to some torque testing here now. So I have this big lag bolt in device here, tightened up real tight so it won't move. And I have a couple of washers and I have a nut here that is loose and I'm gonna tighten it up right now. And I'm going to torque it to 60 foot pounds, which is what the ratchet says that it can do, up to 60 foot pounds. So let's test it and make sure if that's correct or not. And I have my Harbor Freight torque wrench right here. I darkened up the numbers, hopefully you can see it better. But here you see I have it set to 60 foot pounds. The number is on this side over here, 60 foot pounds. And hopefully that shows up on the camera. And let's tighten it up right now and see what it can do. And then we'll try to remove it. Listen for the click. There you go, 60 foot pounds. Now, let's see if the ratchet fully charged, but I can't show you because it doesn't have an indicator, but it's fully charged. Let's see if it will undo that bolt, 60 foot pounds. It's trying to. It's trying, but it can't do it. I'm trying to give it every possibility to help it along, but it won't do it. See, it's loose and ready to go. Well, there you go. If you give it several attempts, it can do it. But if you expect it to do it on the first try, it won't do it. So after several tries, but you have to keep removing it and putting it back because once it hits that stop, it won't do it again. So you have to take it off, spin it around, put it back, and then it will try to torque it again. So it can do up to 60 foot pounds after several attempts. Okay guys, so here we are under my 2016 Tucson, and like most modern cars, everything underneath is covered up with material to make it more aerodynamic. So I'm gonna do an oil change on this car, and to do that, I have to remove this panel right here, but I'm not gonna do the entire oil change, don't worry about that. If you do want to see an oil change on a 2016 and newer Tucson, I'm gonna put the, uh, the link to that right up above, I've done that before, go check that out, and you can see how to do the entire oil change. Right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically use the Harbor Freight ratchet and put it to a practical use. So I need to remove about a couple hundred bolts under here. Let's see how it performs. And these bolts are only attached on to clips. They're not attached on to nuts. They're not really tight. So I would say they're probably somewhere between uh, 20 to 30 foot pounds because they're hand tightened. I didn't uh, really torque them on very hard. So let's see how this puppy performs. And I'm tightening it. Oh no, let's turn it around the other way. So there you go. It removed the uh, bolts quite uh, rapidly. It uh, took it out with no trouble whatsoever. So it certainly helps to speed up the process when you're doing something like this with uh, many, many bolts that you need to remove. It certainly will speed things up. 
Okay guys, some final thoughts on the Earthquake XT 12 volt lithium ion cordless ratchet from Harbor Freight. I think it is a darn good ratchet. I mean, it's a decent size, it's a decent weight, it's about the same as a air ratchet without the hose. There's no hose for you to worry about over here. The battery is compact, it fits right into the handle, it's convenient, uh, not very noisy. Not very noisy compared to its air-powered counterpart. So to me, it seems like a decent ratchet. I mean, for the price, if you get it on sale, 99 bucks most of the time with coupon, it is not a bad ratchet. I would not pay the full retail price. Don't do that. Watch my other videos, my coupon videos that I put out all the time. I will point out when this thing is on sale for you. And if you don't mind that it has a few things missing, like a trigger lock, LED lights, things like that, then it's a good enough ratchet for you. If those features are important to you, I suggest you look somewhere else, unless in the future, maybe they will upgrade this and add them on. For the time being, I can only tell you what this model has currently. It has a decent amount of power, 60 foot-pounds of torque. We already tested that and proved that it's accurate, but it is not an impact driver, so it doesn't have hammers to keep pounding. Once it stops, you have to reset it and get it started turning again. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the review of the Harbor Freight Earthquake XT 12 volt lithium ion cordless ratchet. And I would suggest getting a couple more batteries if you use this a lot because the batteries don't last very, very long. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and be sure to hit that subscribe button so you get notified of all future videos I produce. Talk to you guys on the next one. Bye bye for now.